is the only one of the three that is adjustable. It's important to note that on the 24-valve engine, the ECM has taken over control of some of the fuel system functions that were previously controlled by the PCM. Another new item is the fuel system relay in the power distribution center, or PDC. This relay supplies power to the fuel injection pump control module. A change to the fuel system is the addition of an electric fuel transfer pump located on the left side of the engine near the fuel filter. Previously, the transfer pump was mechanical. Controlled by the ECM, the transfer pump uses pulse width modulation to provide two different duty cycles, one during engine cranking and one while the engine is running. At crank, the cycle time is reduced to prevent overpressure that may keep the fuel injection pump from operating. The electric transfer pump is self-priming on the low pressure side, while the previous mechanical lift pump was hand primed. The transfer pump routes fuel through the combination fuel filter and water separator. The fuel filter contains a disposable cartridge type element and also includes an integrated heater, a water drain, and an integrated water in fuel sensor. The fuel filter is similar to the previous version, except for the two ports that can be used for fuel pressure testing. Be sure to consult the service manual for the maintenance schedule for the fuel filter. An improved turbocharger leads off the changes to the air intake and exhaust systems on the new diesel engine. The turbo is redesigned for quieter operation, and there are no adjustments you need to make. And while we're on the subject, don't remove the air cleaner cover to check the air filter. Use the filter minder. There are two intake manifold air heater elements located under the intake plenum. Previously controlled by the Jeep Truck Engine Controller, or JTEC Powertrain Control Module, the intake air heaters are now controlled by the fuel system ECM. The heaters warm intake air, which improves cold starts and helps to reduce white smoke. The heaters operate for a longer cycle time during cold ambient temperatures. Because of this, the ECM also controls the weight to start lamp on the vehicle's instrument panel. Another new item is a manifold air pressure or MAP sensor. This component is an input to the ECM and may also be referred to as a boost sensor. A one-piece exhaust manifold, which includes cap screws and spacers, is also new. Its ports are round instead of square, which increases exhaust flow. The important thing to remember here is to use the updated screws and spacers when replacing the exhaust manifold. Other benefits of the new manifold include reduced exhaust leaks and warpage. It is not interchangeable with other units. Now that you've seen what's new on the Cummins diesel, try another review question before we go over some diagnosis and service tips. True or false? The accelerator pedal position sensor, or APPS, is fully adjustable. That's false. The accelerator pedal position sensor is not adjustable at all. If it is found to be faulty, replace the bell crank assembly. It should come as no surprise that when an engine is redesigned, especially one that replaces a mechanical control system with electronic modules, diagnosis and service of customer complaints with that engine will also see some changes. One advantage of electronic control of engine systems is enhanced diagnostic ability through tools such as the DRB3 scan tool. Diagnostic trouble codes, or DTCs, can be read with the DRB3 on diesel-powered vehicles in much the same way they are on other vehicles. Make sure that you choose the module you want to read trouble codes from, such as the PCM or ECM. DTCs that are accompanied by an illuminated malfunction indicator lamp, or MIL, are usually emissions related, while a check gauges lamp will be associated with DTCs that indicate problems in other areas. You can also use the DRB3 to monitor sensor readings with the sensor display and check the operation of electronically controlled switches and solenoids with the actuator tests. The DRB3 can also be used for system tests while the engine is running. Use the DRB3 pressure tester to check for restrictions on the inlet side of the transfer pump. 
Typical readings on the inlet side of the transfer pump should be no more than six inches of mercury. Another tool that is used for diagnosis of the diesel fuel system is a combination pressure vacuum gauge, special tool number 6828. To check the pressure side of the transfer pump, you'll need to obtain a fitting to adapt the gauge to the inlet side of the fuel filter. See this month's reference book for complete specifications on adapters for the combination pressure vacuum gauge. On the inlet side of the filter, up to 16 PSI is normal with a key on and engine off. During engine cranking, the pressure reading should be about 7 PSI, while a minimum of 10 PSI with the engine running is typical in a system that is operating normally. Many times the diagnostic trouble code description alone will be the only thing you need to solve the problem. On low power complaints, for example, MAP sensor malfunction DTCs and fuel-related codes, such as a transfer pump circuit failure, may be present. Other possible causes of low power complaints include the fuel temperature too high, coolant temperature too high or low, or incorrect turbocharger wastegate settings all of which may set a DTC. Conditions such as air in the low pressure fuel system, low pressure in the transfer pump, or low oil pressure probably won't set a code and require further diagnosis. A clogged fuel filter can be a cause of poor performance. A pressure drop across the filter test ports of 5 PSI or greater indicates a clogged filter. Other symptoms of a clogged fuel filter can be white smoke or misfiring at high speeds and light loads, and loss of power at medium to high speeds. The repair for a clogged fuel filter is, you guessed it, changing the filter element cartridge. Be sure to check for any intake air restrictions that could be adding to a low power condition. Also check for loose clamps on the air ducting from the turbocharger to the intercooler and from the intercooler to the intake manifold. The March 1996 Master Tech program covered low power complaint diagnosis on the 12 valve Cummins diesel. Hard start complaints may be caused by a problem with a transfer pump. Insufficient battery voltage at the fuel injection pump can also cause hard starts. Check for voltage that is less than seven volts. The new Cummins engine also brings with it some service procedures that are different than they have been in the past. One of these procedures is purging air from the low pressure side of the fuel system after a fuel filter change or if the vehicle runs out of fuel. First, loosen the banjo bolt at the low pressure fuel supply line on the side of the fuel injection pump. Next, momentarily engage the starter, but do not allow the engine to start. Then release the key to the run position, but do not turn it back to off. The transfer pump will continue to run and purge air from the fuel system for about 25 seconds. Repeat the process until all air has been eliminated from the system. Then tighten the banjo bolt at the supply line to the fuel injection pump. Once you're satisfied that all the air has been purged from the system, 